Hello everyone, I am back from my little content vacation and I thought I'd come back with some heat. You know, real hot video, real hot stuff. TWAB video. Very exciting, I know. But you guys know I only make these when something is actually happening. And today something is very much indeed actually happening. It's a sandbox update for the next season. The footage is just random gameplay, so if you just want to listen, that's totally fine. A lot of weapons and things that need some love are getting that love. A lot of buffs today. Let's start with weapon archetypes. Scouts are getting another 10% PvE damage buff. They're still a little weak, and after using one in GM Arms Dealer for a couple hours yesterday, I'd say this is a good buff. High impact autos, that's 360 RPM autos, are getting a stability buff. Apparently their damage output is pretty good, but their ease of use is pretty not good. So all non-sunset ones are getting a 6 to 12 stability boost. Age old bond, I'm pulling for you buddy. Please be good. Lightweight bows are getting some buffs because their higher damage counterparts are just better. Draw time reduced by 5%, so it's faster to shoot, and they increased the perfect draw window to allow for more opportunities to hit those perfect bow shots. Dire Promise had a wrong zoom stat, specifically Dire Promise, so that's fixed. Glaives, they now work with ACD Zero Feedback Fence, Karnstein Armlets, and Necrotic Grip. That's pretty nice. Maybe Karnstein's getting a little more love as a result. Not that they're that bad, but they've you know, fallen behind a little bit. Breach Grenade Launchers can no longer roll with Concussive Grenade because Blinding Grenade basically does the same thing. And Heavy Grenade Launchers got a 10% damage buff against Majors and above level targets, not including Parasite because, well, Parasite does a lot of damage already. Dares of Eternity weapons got a perk pool update and got an origin trait added to them. That's pretty nice. Gives Dares a little bit of life again. Perks. A lot of perk updates. Invader Tracker and Skulking Wolf are origin traits for Gambit and Iron Banner weapons. They are both way too specific to ever be good, so they're getting changes. Invader Tracker is now Gun and Run, get a sprint speed increase on multi-kill, and Skulking Wolf now works on kills while at low health, enabling it to work for all of PvP. Originally, this perk only worked during The Hunt, aka when you capped all three flags in control, or while your team has the spark, and the perk gives you enhanced radar and removes you from the opposing radar. Ambitious Assassin has almost been replaced by Overflow, so it is getting a buff. Magazine Overflow is going up from 20% from 10% per kill on primary weapons. Specials and heavies are still 10%, but now you can overflow to 150%. That used to be 50% only, so you're getting a lot more ammo loaded into the magazine after a reload if you kill a lot. That's pretty good. Ambitious Assassin was really only being used on specials and heavies. Salvager's Salvo, to name probably the most popular because you got that guaranteed proc on a kill, now this makes it a bit more enticing for primaries. I'll try it out. Wellspring had an internal cooldown. It no longer has that internal cooldown, which enables more explosive weapons, rockets, GLs, to provide more ability energy when killing groups of enemies. Wellspring might be getting removed from my things I want to like, but don't list that I've been slowly trying to make into a video and I just haven't been able to do it. Let's not talk about it. Perpetual motion procs a lot. So Bungie is removing the audio and visual feedback when it turns on so it's not constantly pinging in your ear. Lead from gold was not working properly when you had two special weapons equipped. It now gives the right amount of ammo to each weapon. Viced Stinger was inadvertently applying a charge speed buff to linear fusions. It was not supposed to be doing that. It's only supposed to be for bows, draw speed buff, you get it. That has been fixed, but the ammo refill situation has not changed. This is mainly going to affect Reed's Regret, as that's the only linear fusion that can get Vice Stinger, but maybe not in the most dramatic of ways. We'll see. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of testing going on. Finally, Zen Moment and Particle Repeater got clearer definitions of what they actually do. Exotics, we got some buffs. This section, kind of a bigger deal. I know, you know, usually exotics, pretty exciting. 
but this is something that people have been asking for and will hopefully shake things up in anti-champion world. A handful of exotics, small handful, are getting intrinsic anti-champion capabilities along with some random buffs here and there. La Monarch, arguably an exotic that did not really need to receive much attention, is getting intrinsic overload to its poison arrows. Thunderlord is getting overload. Malfeasance is getting unstoppable added to its explosions, and it also got a base plus 25 airborne effectiveness boost. And Wish Ender, intrinsic anti-barrier. Also, increased number of targets hit from two to three versus most targets. It's still two against players. You're gonna get more hits versus vehicles, for example. 10% damage buff versus champs, majors, and mini bosses. And the biggest part, an eight millisecond draw speed increase. Huge, huge stuff. Tiku's Divination, another exotic that did not really need to receive much attention, is also getting that lightweight bow buff that I mentioned earlier, that draw speed increase. So Tiku's gonna be even better now. Legend of Acreus. Fallen pretty far behind, you know, it, Legend of Acreus is pretty much feast or famine. It's either really, really good or really, really bad. The Catalyst now gives Trench Barrel. Trench Barrel, for those that don't remember, because not a lot of people are using shotguns right now, gives a 50% damage increase, among other things, for five seconds or three shots after hitting with a melee attack. Very interested to see if this will have an impact, especially when combined with Arc 3.0, which is coming in Season 18. I wonder if there's going to be any sort of synergy there, where we have some sort of Arc build that promotes melee. You know, I'm I'm holding out for you, Legend of Acreus. I, I hope you come back into the meta in some way, because it's such a fun gun. Callus Mini Tool, Mita Mini Tool, Drang got some very minor changes. Sweet Business got an airborne effectiveness increase, whoop de doo Fighting Lions, 5% damage buff was rolled back to fix a bug a little while ago. That buff has now been reintroduced. It's getting the intended buff. And the grace window for Within the Herd is now 6 seconds. It's up from 5 seconds. Three exotics are getting reworks. Oh boy. Lord of Wolves is up first. This is a weapon that has been torturing people in PvP for a little while now, and they want to keep it PvE viable without making it even better in PvP. So here's what they're trying to do. Decreased starting ammo in PvP from 15 to now 10. Reduced burst size from 10 to 5 shots when Release the Wolves is active. So now you're probably like, well, what does it even do? Reduced the burst delay by 60% when Wolves is active now. Decreased base damage by around 20%, so it's now 35 to the body, 44 with Release the Wolves on, but increased damage in PvE by 20% to compensate for that. I personally have not used Lord of Wolves in PvE since it was baking, absolutely baking, last wish bosses, so I don't have that much insight on the weapon in PvE nowadays. Dead Man's Tail. Cranial Spike, which is the exotic perk on the gun, was causing problems with unintended damage scalers against players, and it wasn't fulfilling the hipfire fantasy as strongly as Bungie wanted it to be doing, so it's being reworked to lean into that fast-firing hipfire gun. No longer buffs damage versus players. Instead gives increased reload speed, aim assist, and range per stack, but it still gives damage in PvE, so don't worry about that. When you reach max stacks of Cranial, the Catalyst makes it fire at 180 RPM, but each bullet is reduced in damage by 20%. This is another gun that I have not used a whole lot in PvE or PvP in recent memory, so I don't just want to guess on what I think is going to happen. I'll leave that to one of the PvP lords. Collective Obligation. This is one of the weaker raid exotics that we've gotten recently, and Bungie is wanting to make the exotic perk effects easier to work with in PvE. Void Leech Timer, increased to 15 seconds in PvE, it's still 10 in PvP. Void Leech is when you activate the weapon and you get to use all the effects of Void. Removed the cooldown, there is normally a 10 second lockout after Void Leech is over, now there is none. So we've gone from 10 seconds on to 10 seconds off and then having to rebuild it to now 15 seconds on, no seconds off to rebuild it. 20% damage boost in PvE while Void Leech is on. Less hits required to charge Void Leech. 
Kills against debuffed targets instantly charge Void Leech. Void Leech is instantly charged when you are affected by Void debuffs. No, you cannot hit yourself with a suppressor grenade. Don't even try it. Umbral Sustenance was activating on non-void overshield. That's been fixed. Those are some serious buffs for this weapon. The cooldown was probably the biggest thing for me with regards to the weapon. Being able to just get this thing rolling immediately after Void Leech is over is really, really great. I really enjoyed this weapon with Void 3.0, but it was obvious that without some of those boosts that Void was getting with the mods, that this was just gonna fall behind. So I'm very, very glad to see these boosts. Omnioculus and Whisper of Chains. Omnioculus is a menace in PvP right now. You got triple stacking, invis, hunters roaming around with insane damage resistance. Bungie says no more, or at least not as much. PvE is unchanged. Tier one resistance, damage resistance, going from 10% to 2.5%. Tier two, 15% to 5%. Tier three, 20% to 7.5%. Tier four, 25% to 10% in PvP. Basically, damage resistance effects are not going to be as strong in PvP as they are right now. Nothing else about Omnioculus is changing. Bungie is also looking at more things for Season 19 or maybe mid-Season 18, including, but not limited to, reducing shotgun spread randomness, reducing bow swapping effectiveness, increasing trace rifle ease of use, introducing the full auto setting, reducing the ability of snipers to shoot through flinch in PvP, which still feels rare, but all right, examining small balance changes to pulses, high impact scouts, and precision fusions in PvP, mainly with regards to ease of use, allowing glaive interactions with some exotic armor that feature melee stuff, fixing glaive hit detection, reworking some enhanced perks, and folding spec mods into the base perks. Overall, pretty good stuff. I don't know many people who are not happy with buffs. I will say, I hope Bungie continues with introducing more anti-champion stuff on exotics more in the future, just for the sake of shaking things up in the meta. You know, things are getting a little bland. Le Monarch already gets used a lot. I don't think it really needed the attention. Thunderlord might still not get picked too much with linear fusions and rockets being as strong as they are for boss damage. A lot of people are just insta-killing bosses in GMs, which is insane. Malfeasance, I could see getting some use. It's not the strongest primary in the world, but getting free explosion damage is nice here and there on certain junk enemies since they can actually live long enough to be exploded. And Wish Ender desperately needed some attention. I don't know anyone who's using Wish Ender. Not to mention that bows are incredibly good in GMs, although... We'll see how much damage it does to a shield with that very high draw time. I think it needs to chunk shields pretty hard to get some use, especially with Arbalest still being as dominant as it is. That's all from me for today. Thank you for watching, or listening probably. I'll see you next time.